It's Mike Oresco. Mike, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. How are you? Thank you. I'm getting a little bit of an echo. I hope you can hear me clearly. Uh, how you doing, fellas? We're great. We're good. We can hear um, you just fine. Yeah, we, we can hear you loud and clear. And uh, sure you know who I'm talking to, which one's which, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're the same person. It doesn't matter. Um, Mike, uh, we, just just for the record, we don't have a commissioner in football because BYU is an independent. So we, we kind of want you to be the commissioner of BYU Sports Nation. Are you cool with that? Oh, absolutely. Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> BYU and Navy, very exciting, massive showcase for both programs on ESPN on a Monday night, Labor Day. Uh, what was your reaction when you first heard about that possibility? I was going to say again, you were breaking up a little, Spencer. I'm sorry. Can you say again? You bet. Thank you. What, uh, what was your reaction to BYU and Navy when you first heard about that oh. possibility? Well, you know, I was talking to Chuck Gladchuck about the whole Notre Dame situation, and, uh, you know, we didn't know where it stood, and finally it was clear that they were not going to be able to play. And he mentioned uh, BYU. I had been mentioning BYU to all our schools, so it's possible that I even mentioned it prior because I would love to have our schools play BYU. I mean, we really we really love BYU, and I'm not going to make a big pitch for BYU joining the conference and embarrass Tom Olmo. You know, unless <laughs> he's, he's too great a guy. No, really, I mean, we respect BYU. As, as an independent, uh, and they've done a great job. You know, uh, and he plays a daunting schedule, and he's got a really good team. And by the way, we really own him. If he hadn't beaten Boise last year, I'm not sure you know, they wouldn't have been on New Year's Day instead of uh, Memphis. You know, so he he uh, he came through for us, your team uh, and your coach. Uh, but uh, when, when I heard BYU, I was thrilled because that that's a national game. That's a national brand. Uh, and I knew that that could replace the Notre Dame Navy game. You know, it's hard to replace Notre Dame, of course. You know, that, that game goes back to 1926. There's a long history there. There's a history of the Naval Academy in Notre Dame during World War II. So you would want to have seen that game played. But once the ACC put in their restriction about you got to play in your home state, it was pretty clear uh, the AD at Notre Dame felt he had to abide by those, those protocols. And at that point, I mean, Navy go up there three years in a row probably just didn't make sense to either school. I, I don't know, what, you know, all the details, but um, Chet and I talked a lot about it, and BYU is a great replacement, great. And, and it's going to be on ESPN, you know, 8 o'clock, Monday night. Um, that, that, that is the window that weekend. Last year we had it also, Houston and Oklahoma. So we've been as a conference, we've been very fortunate. ESPN has been good to us in terms of exposure. But uh, couldn't, couldn't be happier about it. And it should get a great audience, too. should be a terrific game. Yeah, I said this could be the most viewed BYU game ever, potentially, on a, on a Labor Day, and people are hungry for football at that point. Who knows, right? Um, you, you mentioned it last year. I, I've joked that Baylor Romney, who BYU's third string, started the Boise State game, that his right arm cost Boise State and the Mountain West millions. So, yeah, that was, that was a big deal for the AC when BYU beat Boise State because that enabled the AC to be the Group 5 team. That was a big deal. Well, yeah, we, we, we always thought we had the stronger conference. Uh, we just did. I mean, you look at Cincinnati, they could have beaten anybody. You know, Cincinnati, they beat BC with 34-6 in the bowl game. Probably could have even been worse. Uh, they were a really good team. They lost to Memphis twice at Memphis in really, really hard-fought games. Uh, UCF was as good a team as we had in our league. They lost three games by seven points with a young quarterback who threw seven interceptions in those games, and he didn't throw any in the other games. I would put UCF up against anybody. SMU was an outstanding team last year. Tulsa almost almost wreaked havoc on our conference. You know, they they missed a 28-yard field goal. They would have beaten Memphis, and we probably wouldn't have been on New Year's Day. But, you know, I made a pitch last year for a two-loss team from our conference to be on New Year's Day, and I was serious. Our, our, our league was better. And uh, the problem is that when our league's better, you know, teams are going to beat each other. And that's really a concern, you know. I mean, look at BYU has, has some outstanding teams, but they play such a tough schedule. It's hard to get through it, you know, when you're playing that many good teams. And I don't think that's necessarily true of the other conferences. And I, I showed, I proved to the committee, I don't know whether they were listening to me or not. It seemed like toward the end they started edging Cincinnati up in the <laughs> rankings. But I looked at the strength of schedule. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even close between our teams and teams from the other G4. By the way, we had a 28-1 record against those teams outside the P5. I mean, come on, 28-1. I could play to a 29 Division II teams and not come up with a record like that. That's pretty impressive when you really think about it. <laughs> I know, I'm talking to conferences. By the way, I guess I'm, I'm getting it all out because I haven't been able to do that. And, and, and really, uh, 
it's been you know the last five months it, on, on a more serious note you know it's been it, it's been all health and safety and all about the pandemic and it didn't even feel appropriate to really talk about the p6 campaign and to tout the conference but now that we're actually thinking we might play football and we're very cautiously optimistic and hopeful we can talk a little about the team from time to time the teams in our league anyway certainly the commissioner of the aac mike oresco with us on byu sports nation I guess our next big question, uh, Mike, is are there any more AAC games in the works with BYU? Because, frankly, we we want them. What can you tell us? Well, you know, again, I can't speak for Tom, but, you know, we've, you know, uh, you know, he and I have communicated. Uh, you know, Tom's an old friend, you know, a great guy, and, and we've been friends for years. Uh, and uh, I, I would, I've encouraged our teams to talk to BYU. You know, we know how many games they've lost. They've lost what five, and, and you never know what the MAC's going to do. So I think they have a Northern Illinois game, right? We're yes. we're not sure Cincinnati won't lose two MAC games if the MAC decides not to play nine conference games or yeah. not to play at all. What they're going to do? But we we've encouraged our schools to talk to BYU, and we're hopeful that uh, maybe there'll be a handful of games that we can play. You know, we have some teams that already have series with BYU coming up, if not this year, starting in, in subsequent years. And again, we really like those those games. We've had great luck. Last year, BYU played at, at USF and, uh, you know, East Carolina prior to that. And, and obviously, Houston had a series with them, has another series. Cincinnati has a series, I think, coming up. I know UCF does down the road. So again, we uh, we really like playing BYU. Always have, and we've had them in our first bowl game, the old Miami Beach Bowl. I know, not a great memory. We don't, we don't talk about that one, Mike. <laughs> the last overtime game, we had the Memphis fella kicked a 55-yard field goal to uh, keep it going in overtime. But uh, and I went to a game at UCF that BYU played into it was another overtime game. Those are games we were fortunate enough to win. But uh, you know, the Houston games, BYU prevailed. Uh, they've just been terrifically competitive games, uh, so we enjoy them. And I love to go to Provo, you know. My wife and I uh, get to Idaho from time to time too, and it's a short ride down to Salt. Well, not ride, a uh, short flight. Down. I did, I did the ride. You know, I did the ride. <laughs> six hours. Uh, but I love Provo, and I love BYU. BYU has the best situated stadium. Uh, BYU and Washington might have the best situated stadiums in the entire country. When you look out over the mountain and and you see that view, and you're up in the, in the press area, spectacular. And we've got about a minute, Mike. Uh, BYU and Houston slated to play on October 16th. Is, th- is that a game that's going to stay on that date, or could that move based on AAC conference scheduling? Yeah, I just don't know. It won't move because of any scheduling we're doing. I just don't know what's happening, you know, between teams right now with all the different, you know, uh, uh, variations and, and all the different, uh, you know, exigencies going on. But, no, we what we did, we played our, our normal schedule because we didn't want to disrupt things with ESPN. Now, ESPN may have to move some of our Thursdays and Fridays based on commitments they're making to the NBA and others because of all the postponed games and everything. Uh, and we'd be fine with that. We'll work it out. But we kept our eight-game schedule. We didn't want to disrupt anything. We gave our teams the opportunity to play as many non-conference games as they could possibly get in. And we don't know if they'll play 12. Many many will play probably 10 or 11. But we thought we'd give them the opportunity. We have relationships with non-conference schools. We also wanted to play P5 schools if we could. BYU, we consider a P5 school. Notre Dame, we consider a P5 school. We've got a couple of those games left. We lost a lot of them, unfortunately. But... Uh, no, that, that that whatever happens to that game, it won't be affected by our schedule per se. Mike, it's great to catch up with you. Uh, and as I stated before, you're the commissioner of us here in Studio B. So uh, we, we embrace The show that. is affiliated with the league. Yes. We want you to know that. <laughs> Yeah, you, you guys are very kind. Uh, Spencer, Jerem, thank you. And uh, always great to see you. you know, love, the, love the color scheme there, too. You got a, you got a great studio there. Uh, and, and look, uh, again, stay well, hope your families and all your listeners, everybody in the BYU sports nation, everybody in the community stays well. That's the most important thing. And we, thanks again for having me. You got it. We appreciate it, Mike. We'll talk to you again soon. Great. Thanks guys. Take care. Have a good one. Stay the commish Mike or